G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today I've got a script that I use quite often to save a really boring task, which is to create window or door sizes based on a size matrix. So typically a size matrix will have a width row and a column height. They're really commonly used by manufacturers to determine all the possible window types you can provide. I've worked for quite a lot of clients that ask for every single possible type in their client's catalog. Now to make every single size, it would take a very long time. I need to create a type, modify the properties, make a new type, modify the properties. Ooh, boring, right? But in this case, you can use Dynamo and the Orchid package, which you'll need to run the script that I built today, um, to actually build these types just based on a cross product of the matrices. This saves me heaps of time when I'm putting together families and I hope it helps you as well. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so um, on the right, we have our type table that we're essentially trying to create a matrix of type from in Dynamo. So we have um, quite a few heights and quite a few widths. We have in this case about six by almost 10. So we have about 50 to 60 types of windows we need to create using one script. Uh, making these one by one would take, you know, probably about at least half an hour. And, and by the end, I think I wouldn't be a very happy chat. So um, at the moment, my window contains no sizes, it's just an unspecified type. Now in this case, I have made sure that the parameters I have set right now are the ones that I want to copy when I make this window. We're going to modify a few parameters, but we're not going to modify all of them. So in this case, um, I'm modifying the height, the width, and I'll also set a model number. But you are going to want to make sure that any parameters you want copied and you don't want to drive with a formula, for example, a description or something like that, are the way they are in the base type, because it is going to use these when it creates new types uh, by default in Dynamo. So in Dynamo, I'm going to begin just by setting up uh, essentially the width and the height lists. So I'm going to make a new script and I'll just save as, and I'm going to work in automatic mode for now, just to keep things easy. I'll just call this window types. Now I'm going to create a string node because I want to run this from Dynamo player ideally. So my first input in this case is going to be a width prefix. So this isn't the width of the window. This is actually the prefix that they use. Um, so in this case, you can see that we have FW0606, FW0706, etc. So we have the width in this case um, on the end. So I'm just going to write them all with a comma separating them in this case. So we have 06, 07, 08, 09, 10, 12, and then we stop there. So these are going to be things that a user can put in separated by a comma into Dynamo Player, um, which will then be split up and used by the Dynamo scripts. Now I also want this, the widths as well. So in this case, uh, we're just gonna say, what are the widths themselves? And I'm just gonna type those in manually. 610, 730, uh, 850 by the looks of. It looks like there's a few different ranges um, that they work with, just to make things even more complicated. Far out. Obviously these are window manufacturers, don't use Robert. <laughs> um, I'm gonna add a comma in between in a code block as well. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna split these up. I'm going to use the string split node. Of course, searching for string split doesn't actually find string split because Dynamo searching is always that good. Um, I digress. So if I connect these together, what we'll get is a list instead. So we've broken up this string every time a comma occurs. Now I'm going to do this twice. I'm obviously going to do this for the actual widths themselves as well. So now I have the widths as a list as well. Now I'm going to take these exact same nodes and I'm going to be doing the same for the heights too. So I'm just going to go and replace width with height. And we're essentially just building up our two sides of our cross matrix at this point. So our height prefixes in this case, and I can't wait to get this off my screen. Um, uh, 06, 07, 09, 10, 12, 13, 15, 18, 20, and 21, I assume. Yeah, 21. So quite a lot, um, and in this case, um, once I've built this, I'm just gonna close the window file and work entirely in Dynamo. Um, but what we're building here is like the base condition that you would have in Dynamo Player. So if you have like a really common range of window sizes for this, you might wanna make that your default input, or maybe you might wanna make it empty. So in this case, uh, 772, essentially just building up that same list of values separated by commas. Absolutely brain numbing stuff, but it's sure beats typing it in manually one by one. And now we should also have a set of heights and also a set of height prefixes. Now those lists should be the exact same size. So do be very careful at that point. Now we are gonna convert some of these things as well. So I do wanna turn some of these things um, into numbers. At the moment, this is a string. So I wanna actually turn this into a number. So I'm gonna use the two number node. 
which will change the object type of this data. It looks the same, but now it's actually a numerical parameter, which is really important because we are going to want to set the length of some parameters and that's not going to accept a string. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to build the names of our types. So firstly, I'm going to want to add on the front of my um, width, uh, I'm going to add my width, space, times, space, uh, my height. So I'm going to use a code block. I'm firstly just going to add um, a middle field to my, um, in this case, my widths. And what I want to do is I want to cross these across every single possible height combination that these have. So from here, um, I'm going to be adding and I need to use the add node so I can apply a cross product to my height. Now at the moment it doesn't work. If I run a lacing cross product, now I have every single possible combination in sequence. Pretty cool, right? Um, so from here I can just flatten. And now I have pretty much every single possible size, all 60 of them in this case. So this is just in this case the type name of the family type we want to create. We're still going to need to go and set a few other parameters. We're also going to have to set the model number in this case. Um, so in this case, we can see the height comes before the width, because why not? Um, I'm going to use another code block and I'm going to say FW. Now I might actually say prefix plus, and in this case, I'm going to say uh, W plus H. Um, now in this case, W and H, and I'd say a pref instead of prefix. I'm going to make a string input. And I'm just going to make this an input, and I'm just going to call this a prefix of model. In this case, fw. I'll make that an input, yeah, which I have. So that's my prefix. Uh, I then want to get my height first, actually, not my width. Now I'm going to get my height, which in this case is uh, back here, and my width is back here. So these are the height codes, not the heights themselves. And now if I run this, now I'm going to have to apply this on a cross-product basis as well. Um, now, I do need to be careful in this case, the order um, of the cross products. This might actually be problematic. Um, so, because the width and the height are the opposite ways around, it's actually a real pain in the butt. Um, it's, yeah, it's almost the wrong way around. What a pain in the butt. Stupid window catalogs. Um, so, <laughs> in this case, uh, they're really frustrating documents to deal with. They really are. Um, I mean, if I try to add that onto the widths, the problem is that my cross product's not going to operate in the right order. Um, I need to rethink this. So, I mean, this will work in terms of generating all the possible sizes, but if we look at the list structures here, um, they're essentially the inverse of each other. So I think if I transpose this first, that probably works. Yeah, there we go. So that now that I think is the way we want it. So width, height, width, height, height, width, height, width, height, width. Yep, what a pain, but there we go. So now if I flatten this output, it's now gonna be correct. But because my um, width and height are essentially inverted between type and uh, between the other way around, um, it's, it's going to be a problem. So we can see that this sort of fixes uh, fixes that problem at least. But um, yeah, what a pain in the butt. <laughs> okay, so in this case, we now have um, all of our sizes, our names. We also have all of our uh, model numbers that line up to our sizes. So the next thing we're going to need to do is actually create um, our family types. But in this case, we are going to need to do a few things. So we are going to have to actually build some lists of widths and heights equal to the size of the types um, in order. So we're going to use a list cycle and a list repeated item node to do this. So we need um, the width list to repeat itself for each height element. So I think in this case, we're going to use of repeated item. So we're going to want to repeat our height list, because if we check the order that our heights occurred in, notice in this case they're climbing, going back to the start, climbing, going back to the start. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to count, and I think in this case I'm counting the number of widths that I have. So I have six widths, and we're going to want to repeat our height list, um, which is made up of ten items, six times. So I'm going to take that as my amount. And for my items, I'm going to go back and get my heights. And there we go. We can see that this list is now occurring in the same order as the heights of the elements. So we've got another element here. Now we can flatten this. And for our width, um, we're essentially just doing it the, the other way around, I guess, in this case. Um, so what I can do is just copy these. But instead, I'm going to count my, uh, my other way around. So I'm going to count my... 
my elements here. So I have 10 of these, but now I want to repeat my widths. Now I think I might be using a list cycle in this case, because in this case, we're actually just repeating the item that many times. So I might actually need to use a list cycle, but I'll see what sort of output I can get anyway. Um, we're going to repeat in this case, this item. Uh, but see at the moment, this isn't quite right. So we're not actually doing what we want there. We actually want to repeat the item itself. So there we go, that, that works. Um, now we're repeating each item in order. So we're now going to have um, width, it's going to be six, then it's going to be seven, then it's going to be eight, nine, etc. And likewise, because we've uh, repeated each item by the count instead, not the list itself, now we get that outcome. So we have to structure our data in very particular ways. Now, obviously this approach is only gonna work for when your size is inverted to the type. So if you are working with a window catalog, um, which doesn't have that set up, you'll need to, I guess, work in a slightly different way. But hopefully this has shown you a way that you can build parallel lists of data um, based on a fairly strict naming convention. At this point, we're really just creating our families. Um, so I am going to work in my current family document. I'm just going to look for current because Orchid has a very particular uh, node for this. So I think this will get, no, that's current family type. I need to get my current document. It is important that you do use the Orchid specific one. Um, so in this case, it's saying no types available. That's fine. I think um, we should have at least one type, unspecified type. So it's interesting it's telling me no types are available. Oh, well, I'll try it anyway. Um, at this point, we're going to create family types. And I think um, I think I can make the types first. Of course, if I search for it, it doesn't come up, because why would it? I'll just try typing it in exactly. So we're looking for create family type. So for the family document, we're going to create types with, in this case, uh, these names. After that, we're going to set some parameters based on those outcomes. So. I might just set up the parameter set values as well. So in this case, if I search for parameter set values, so this isn't set parameter by name. This is the orchid specific one. I'm gonna set myself in this case to a longer slicing. I'm not sure if it's required, I think it was. Um, but in this case, for each family type we create um, for a particular parameter name. So in this case, we're gonna set three different parameters here. We're gonna set width, height, and model. So I'm gonna say width, height and model, and I'm gonna put them in a list as well. And over here we have, um, we have the, I think this is the width. No, that's the height, isn't it? I just need to check which one's which. So we have the height, actually the height, the width, and the code. So in this case, I've actually went and retrieved the wrong field. I need to actually repeat uh, the number itself. So I've went and retrieved that. I need to get this. There we go. So this is the width. Okay. So we're actually doing it in the order of height width model. I'd rather get them in the right order. Um, it's much easier to follow the order of what we're doing that way. And I might just put enters in these. There we go. Okay. So, um, and actually I don't need this to be in a list. I want them to be three inputs. Okay, so we have a uh, height on the family name, the family document, and the value will um, we'll switch to manual mode now. And I'm just gonna copy two more of these. And the values in this case are gonna be three things. So not the family name, but in this case, we're gonna have our height, our width, and our model. And then we're gonna have our family document and our type names. So that's not gonna work, is it? I need to actually go width and model. So I might actually just undo that exercise because it will have created all those types, unfortunately. Um, this is sort of a task that's pretty hard to undo if you get it wrong. So you do wanna make sure you get it right. Um, I'll just try it again with that correction made because that would have made a pretty big difference um, having that parameter name set incorrectly uh, three times. So we'll try that again, and it should be much more successful this time. So now I've actually connected these properly to each respective parameter name. So if I run this again, I should hopefully get a better outcome. 
and I don't think it should take as long as it did before. I think probably because it was set to three parameter types, it was slowing it down. Um, I'm not actually sure what it was doing there. It must have been trying to set those parameters each time, three times. So I guess it is a little bit of a, a slow script. It is making a lot of data. Um, and I guess, I guess there's not really too much we can do about that given it's in a custom package. But it's still a lot faster than the manual way. Come on. Cool. Okay. So at that point, it looks like it's worked. Um, we can verify that we have all the 60 types in our family. The height and the width are set correctly. We can check another one just to be sure. 610 by, 9, by 915. No, 2058. <laughs> there we go. And we can see that the model number is correct as well. So all this data has been set up uh, basically by Dynamo for us. It saves us a lot of time. Um, we can also open the script in Dynamo Player um, if we want to do it more uh, in a more user-friendly way where the user has more control over what happens. So if I go to Dynamo Player and I navigate to where I have to save that script, um, I can also do it using this as an alternative. Cool. So I'm just going to navigate to my desktop, open my types or my, my edit types or inputs tab, uh, edit inputs tab. And I should see the inputs I nominated before, so my prefixes, um, so I can see my width prefix, my width, my height, my height prefix, and my, my model. Um, in this case, let's just take out maybe some of the heights. Um, so in this case, I do have to also take out the heights themselves, um, and we'll just take out a few of these just to keep things simple. And let's just uh, leave this as FW, just so there's a little bit less stuff to create. But essentially it's doing the same thing as what we had before, um, but just with Dynamo in the background instead. Um, so we should see the same, effectively the same outcome, but let's not hit the material browser. And there we go, we can see all those types, um, again present in the model with the respective model code. Um, so hopefully this helps you save a little bit of time, I found it's been really useful for me, especially when putting together window catalogues. Um, and sometimes door catalogues as well when there's lots of different size variations that people ask for. Um, and there we go. Um, this is one of those tasks where once I knew how to script it, I never do it the boring way ever again, and hopefully the same applies for you. Um, hopefully you found this an interesting tutorial, and it was a good example of how to use a cross product to achieve um, an outcome like this, which gives you the option to generate essentially a full permutation of options in a list. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos like this one. Thanks, take care.